the riskiest, best, and scariest advice I've ever received. What's the worst thing that could happen? Like, I've just been thinking about it. You're gonna stay here and just wonder what your life would have been like. Don't be afraid to get it wrong. And I got it wrong a bunch of times. <laughs> you can't afford rent, you don't know what you're gonna do. I kind of sucked it up and rolled up my sleeves and put my war paint on and decided I'm gonna work this out. Four children. That, I mean, that is amazing. That exhausts me to say that. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work. I mean, what's but the key? But it's the greatest job I've ever had in my life. I don't know if there's a key. I learn from them. They learn from me. We raise each other. I also have a 23-year-old and a 21-year-old. So I lean in on them right now when I'm raising a 15-year-old boy. His name is Shia, my son. And raising a 16-year-old, I... We raise each other and our family in the same way that the four of you in your household raise your little ones. I can't do it alone. We're a tribe. So the, so the, how... gap, the gap's 23 to 15. Yeah. Okay. My son is 15. Rain is 16. Sierra is 21. Wow. And Raya is 23. Who you know. How have you been able to do it so successfully, though, with L.A., Hollywood, everything you have going on? I mean, you're, you're really like building an empire. Have you, how have you been able to manage all this? It's a lot. Um, I would say the younger me didn't have much of a social life. I was always a working mom. My mom was a working mom. She raised three jobs growing up, really simple life. A lot of communication, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of honesty, a lot of quality time, maybe more than quantity at busy times in my life. We have a lot of family dinners. Um, we just... We give each other grace, and I'm always communicating with my children. I have to do this. I might miss out on that, but I'm going to make up for it here. Do you like your fabulous, fabulous life? This is how we get to have all that. <laughs> like, I'm leading by example. When you were young and your mom was working all these jobs, what was that like for you? I think I didn't know the difference. I think vulnerably, I probably spent, a, I did spend a lot of nights waiting and wanting more of her, but I grew up seeing that and understanding that. And I think it gave me a great work ethic, gave me grind, it gave me grit. Like you can't really teach that. Um, and she was a really loving, amazing mom without a lot of time. But she gave me, a cert there were certain virtues and certain characters and she made up for it. So I never really punished her for it. Like I never made her feel guilty. She, like I don't. She just had to do it. She had to do it. Yeah. And I didn't know anything different. It so. is hard, though, now that I'm a, a mom, even like today I have to leave. I have to go to L.A. and leave them. And it's you just feel like you have to do it because, like you said, it affords them a certain lifestyle. I guess we're always wanting to do more or do it better as moms. Right. And that's kind of the fucked up part about parenting. And I think the pressure that society puts on us. I wrote a book a long time ago. Um called The Naked Mom, kind of a silly title because I think that was probably a little too provocative and moms don't have time to read books. But one of the chapters was called Not Guilty, just straight up not guilty. And it was an intention, an action to not do guilt. And people were like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's, it's a choice. You can feel guilty because you're coming to work to do something incredible. Ne everything you do is never going to be enough or you can just choose to do it and love them through it and not feel guilty about it. I I think that's really toxic. I think a lot of women have so much guilt. Yeah, I mean, it's a big conversation. Well, because men, I think because of the social, social norms, like we don't, I don't feel guilty going to work. Like I want to spend time, more time with my children and my family, of course, but there's not that kind of pressure. Like nobody ever comes to me and is like, well, you're working a lot. I know, it's so true. It doesn't happen, right? Like, I feel guilty all the time. So isn't that interesting society and how far we've come as women? And that now we're able to be ballers and badasses and entrepreneurs and CEOs and yet still be mothers. And some women feel that they have to choose between the two, right? Or they're going to do both and do it with a little bit of guilt. I have so many kids and so many responsibilities and I love what I do. And I, I give myself so much grace to do everything I want to do. And I think I'm a committed connected. I think I'm a great mom. Well, I think it's interesting that you tell me that your mom w did have three jobs and she was working so hard, but she was still a really incredible mom. Yeah. And it sounds like there's no ill will towards your mom. You're actually got your grit and your perseverance yeah. from your mom. Yeah. So that makes me actually feel a little more settled. I think you're probably a more well-rounded woman. 
I think you are probably a better wife, partner, and a better mother. I actually I joke around about this a lot with my girlfriends and mommy friends. Being at home with your kids is the hardest freaking job in the world. And sometimes going to work, it's like today I walk in, everybody, I'm in this beautiful studio. Someone handed me a cup of coffee. For me, that's like, <laughs> right. let me pull out the, the violins. Right, right. Just to be served, to have some escapism, to be in a space where I guess you're giving even though you're working, but giving in a different way that's elevating your goals. I, I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just very pro, I'm pro women carving out time and finding boundaries and being an amazing, dedicated mother no, Brooke, while we, being dedicated to themselves. We only we only rolled like, the red carpet for you. Normally, we just throw a used pizza box <laughs> at the person and say, yeah, grab, grab what you can find in the, in the trash. It's in a nice cup. Yeah. It's on a saucer. <laughs> I told him I got everybody ready. I said, Brooke's coming in. Get, the, get everything presentable. But when, you. once you leave, it's all going to fall apart. What was the first epiphany where you realized that you were sort of meant to be in entertainment? I never thought I would be in entertainment. I always saw myself as a businesswoman. Um, kind of dabbled in entertainment, stepped into it rather by accident. Um, I got, I, I really educated myself on the road during Wild On and did my first real show on the road in Spain and signed a contract, kind of faking it. <laughs> making it until I made it. Is honestly, this, be, well, this is the, this is after Hawaiian <laughs> Tropic, though. Yeah. That was the first. The, I'm gonna go back. This oh, is I, I'm researched. <laughs> this is that was the first moment, right? Yeah. Um, that was the well. Okay, so you're talking about like bikini contests. I'm talking going, about young, going young, way back. You're like what, sixteen, seventeen? Oh, shit. Yeah. Um. No, I was. I was. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Because you know more than I do, than I can remember. Probably right around there, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. But at that time, I was that young girl from Tucson, Arizona, from a really simple town, really scared and not super confident and really intimidated by everything that was L.A. Because that's just when you're not from here and you're not in the business, it's bright and big and beautiful and fancy. And I think I just was always taking chances in my life as a human being, as a young girl. I wasn't afraid to screw it up or get it wrong. Still get it wrong. Awesome lesson for mommying. I was never afraid to screw it up. Um, but I never thought I was going to land here. No way. So how did you enter? Did you enter yourself? Did someone else enter you? Funny enough, Hawaiian Tropic, I won a really cheesy <laughs> acting scholarship, if you want to call it that, that sent me out to L.A. And I remember speaking to my parents and packing my bags and taking my dog with me and my dad saying, go to L.A. and do what you're supposed to do. And if it doesn't work out, come home. So can you imagine like my father, who was um, a New Yorker, Armenian, super strong, was like, go, you're going to stay here and just wonder what your life would have been like. Go to L.A. What's the worst thing that could happen? Like I have goosebumps thinking about it. And he said, come home if it doesn't work out. But don't sit here and wonder what your life could be like. And that was probably the riskiest, best and scariest advice I've ever received. And I, I'm always grateful for that. And I always tell people, you got to take chances and go explore and don't be afraid to get it wrong. And I got it wrong a bunch of times. So what's your first memory when you get to L.A.? Um, got to L.A., um, nothing that I thought it would be. What did you think it would be? Um, a little <laughs> bit more organized, a little bit of a nurturing community, a little bit more of like a loving welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I, a didn't nurturing know, community. I didn't know that I was going to be like this no, young bikini girl nurturing. from Arizona yeah. dropped into the freaking jungle. Like, go figure that out. You can't afford rent. You don't know what you're going to do. There's creepers everywhere. <laughs> um, no one's nice to you. There's no sisterhood circle. Like, I just, I had no idea what I was getting myself yeah. into. And I kind of sucked it up and rolled up my sleeves and put my war paint on and decided I'm going to work this out and did the side jobs and had the six month lease everywhere in town, worked downtown in the garment industry. Um, and then finally, I went on an audition for Wild On and had no idea even what that was about. Didn't know the E-Network, never saw the show, didn't have an agent. I didn't really know what I was going to do. It was a friend of a friend that sent me. It's one of those terrible stories for people that are aspiring to be in the business. Why? Just because it's like by accident? Because by accident, I went on a meeting and I wasn't so intense and nervous about it because I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Yeah, but there's a lesson there. But there's a lesson Meeting there. you in person, though, I will say you have it. 
Oh, you can't really you. explain what it is. It's kind of like a charisma. It's charisma. Mm-hmm. You, you just you have it or you don't. So I'm not surprised that you sort of stumbled into it like that. I appreciate that. That's a really I would say the same thing about you. It's a really nice compliment. Whatever that it thing is. Um, I guess we all kind of look for that. We look for it in love. We look for it in partnerships, entrepreneur opportunities. I mean, it's you kind of in your gut, you kind of know, right? I think that it's it's hard to to say. Oh, like I knew I was going to be. Um, I don't. Uh, not famous isn't the right word. Maybe that you knew you were meant to be put here to uh, entertain. I don't know. I don't. I I I knew. Well, you know, it's maybe a little gooier than you, you want to get, but I I knew that I had faith in one st- step forward, and I, totally I had get faith in taking advantage of the right opportunities without knowing what the end result would be. So I would say I probably spent a decade longer than I sh- could have. Now as a woman and a businesswoman, I want to get from point A to point B. I want to be strategic. I want to surround myself with the right people. I want to be thoughtful and educated. Back then, I was just carefree and faithful in my decision-making process. I mean, my daughter, Naraya, my oldest, who you know, I was pregnant. I went on the road and did 40 countries on the road wow. as a single mom with a, I was, shouldn't say single. I wasn't married yet. I don't mean to be disrespectful to my ex. But I was on the road alone with my daughter, hosting a television show, traveling around the world. Call me crazy. How old was she? She was a baby. She was three months old. I know. Like, you should see her face right now, everyone. I know. I know. Take but it's a, one of those things where maybe you just didn't know the difference. I didn't know better. Yeah. I knew that I was not going to leave my baby at home. I mean, but, I'm, but I'm, when I say 40 countries, I mean, I wore her. I brought a, a nurse with me and I was crazy. But I... What was crazier to me was thinking about not attachment bonding with my daughter and leaving her at home. And I didn't know better. And quite honestly, looking back, it was the most amazing stint of my life. One of the greatest shows I've ever worked on. And it was simple. We had a simple bag of stuff. Like I'm talking like books and Cheerios, not an enormous amount of gear to entertain my child. We slept in the same bed together. Got a lot of criticism for that. But we were just making it up as we went along. And it worked for me. And then I got pregnant with Sierra and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> I need to get off the road. So I did Wild On for two years and then did a handful of shows at E. Um, and then, you know, done, dealt with the challenges and struggles of life and that divorce and falling in love again and redesigning a new life and blah, blah, blah. But I think I just kept doing things that felt right and that brought me joy and allowed me to discover new talents and new things. And when you get divorced for the first time and you're in front of the world, how does that feel? Well, I think any time alone or in front of the world, for me, I would have swore that I would have stayed married because I really believed in love, but I was a really bad picker. (laughs) I think I didn't choose wisely. I have no regret. I'm so happy that I married Garth and that I had Naraya and Sierra with him one of the greatest, hardest, most incredible learning opportunities of my life. But shocking and deflating. And I don't think I knew what I was in when I was in it because I was young and I was hustling and I was working. And I was so in love with my children that I just knew that it was time for change. And then I quickly was in a new loving relationship, which made it a hell of a lot easier, to be honest. <laughs> There's no hiding the truth it of seems my like past. Being with a doctor, <laughs> too, has like a whole different layer because the a, a doctor with at his level, I mean, yeah. he's well, you talk doctor. about two completely opposite human beings. So when two worlds collide, two souls collide, two spirits collide, whatever you want to call it. And I've done this a couple of times. I don't think that and I say it respectfully, too, because I, I always want to honor the people in my past, whether it was right or wrong for me. I I don't think that we were ever going to, our spirits were ever going to align. We were completely opposite human beings, really trying to work it out and really trying to work it out for our family. And I made mistake after mistake after mistake. My greatest regret, I don't think I've ever said this publicly, but fuck it, why not? My greatest regret is that he and I never really healed we kind of moved on and we still don't have a relationship, which is really sad for my children. But I don't think we were mature enough or capable enough in the process of that pain 
to kind of just meet each other with an apologetic honesty. I mean, you don't you know? think that would happen now? Even after all this time? No. no. Time has passed. I, I guess I would, but no, I don't think time's passed. I think not everyone's capable or willing or wanting to heal and learn. Not everybody needs it. Yeah. I need it in my life as a woman. Um, yeah. I think that I think that <laughs> I know that well, it seems like with both of you guys, you were your careers took off so crazy from from just like an outside thing that it's like maybe the reason that you didn't have the time or the space to heal is because your careers were so big. Yeah, maybe and you're just trying to survive, I think. Right. I think you're trying to survive. You know what I would tell people, younger people, the younger me, the new mom. And no one had, I don't know about you guys, but nobody had this conversation with me. Maybe we're more conscious now as, as parents because we read and we study and we have access to everything. But nobody ever said, choose wisely who you're going to raise a family with. Because you know, you're so, going to be stuck with that person forever. No one ever told me that. Do I would tell my children that. It's so funny. We, were, we drove up from San Diego this morning and we were talking about that. And I was telling her, like, I just subconsciously... To me, it always is like, okay, you're going to be with somebody for a very long time. Like pick, don't, don't pick some dodo bird, right? You got to mm -hmm. pick the right person. But she was saying that like, she never thought about this. I never understood what an important, now that I'm older and I have wisdom, I'm like, oh my God, thank God. I sort of tripped in the right hole. <laughs> well, thank God. Thank no, I mean, God that he tripped in the right hole. Not Listen, but, word. but like, it's, it really is one of the most important decisions because like you just said, even if you get married to someone and you divorce them, if you have kids with them, it's. You're in it. You know, but you're right, though, that there's not, you know, nobody sits down and says, hey, this is going to be a really important decision. And I would argue it's one of the most important decisions who you decide to have children with and who you decide to be in a relationship with. Because so. it might be the most important. I was talking I, to I a single so. buddy of mine. I was like, listen, like he was saying, oh, maybe I'll just have a kid. And I'm like, listen, if you don't, you don't just have like once you have the kid, you're parenting with that other person for, you know, hopefully as long as the child is alive. Yeah. So. And like, I wonder if you're capable, right? So you're in love and it's intoxicating, not chemically, but well, no, chemically <laughs> from a pheromone standpoint. And I don't know that you have the sense, the common sense to really even have that dialogue with yourself. Like, I think opposites attract sometimes when it comes to raising a family. Does your faith align? Do your virtues align? Does your character align? And it doesn't mean to say that somebody can come from a less than perfect background, but maybe they've done the work and realized that they're going to live differently. Or uh, there's just so many things that the signs were so loud and are so there if we're just listening. And I don't know if we are as younger people. I don't know if that siren song is loud enough that we can actually hear it. I think that this conversation, though, is important for people to hear because you're right. It, there isn't a lot of conversation around who you're who you end up marrying. I never is, thought about it. Well, this sometimes hits a nerve, too, because we've touched on this. And I think there's the people that have not got in the relationship yet. And hopefully this reaches them. And they're like, OK, maybe I should be thoughtful. And then there's the people that are fine. Like, oh, yeah, I picked right. But then there's the people that are like, oh, shit, I picked wrong and I'm in it. And it hits the nerve because some people are sitting there listening, being like, Shit. One thing that has been constant in my skincare routine from the beginning is Dr. Dennis Gross. I am so, so in love with him as a human, but also his skincare products. So they just launched this situation that I need to tell you about. It is the Derma Infusions Plump and Repair Lip Treatment. Okay. It is this lip treatment that plumps your lips to two times the volume. How do I know? I've been trying it for the last month. It gives you guys this like natural color that enhances the lips, but it also hydrates your lips at the same time. If you want a plumping lip treatment, I'm telling you, turn to Dr. Dennis Gross. He is such a practitioner. He's a doctor. He's in the lab. Additionally, you guys have seen me wearing their Facewear Pro LED device. It's the like mask that I wear for daily red light therapy. I use it on my face when I meditate. And they just came out with a device that targets the lips. So they also have this device that's like a new lipwear pro. It boosts collagen on the lips, which we love. And it also is very preventative, anti-aging, and just immediate for plumping lips. So if you want to take your beauty routine to the next level with immediate and long-term benefits, you're going to go to ddg.skin slash skinny or click the link in the description to shop my exclusive bundles featuring the new lip products and some of my other all-time favorites for up to 25% off. ddg.skin slash skinny. I am on a trip. I call it a trip because my kids are here for a month in San Diego. 
We are staying here to visit family, friends, come to LA, and we've just wanted to sort of escape the heat in Austin. So we're out here and I have my vacation routine on point. It's different than my routine at home. But one thing that is not different is my daily water. So every morning I wake up, I like to sex up my water in every which way. I'll do a bunch of ice. I do water. I do mint, ginger, lemon. Sometimes I add a hydrogen tablet, but I always add my detox drops by Saqqara. Saqqara has an amazing section on their site for wellness. I also love their beauty drops, which are minerals. You can put both those drops in your water, and I just feel like it sets the tone for a nice hydrated day. Sakara brings expertly designed organic nutrition programs and wellness essentials right to your door. So if you're looking for like science-backed, ready-to-eat meals that deliver results that you can see and feel, check them out because they literally have the best, healthiest delivery service. From weight management and easing bloat to boosting energy and clear skin, Sakara has you covered. Right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when they go to sakara.com slash skinny or enter code skinny at checkout. That's Sakara S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash skinny, and you get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash skinny. So what are you waiting for? Our next partner is AG1. If you have been thinking about trying AG1, now is the time and we have our best offer yet. Okay. If you're looking to implement greens into your life, in my opinion, this is the brand. I have heard about this from every highly successful person that you can think of. It has multivitamin, probiotics. It's drinkable. It's a formulation of vitamins. It's just a great way to get nutrients in. Michael is a big fan of AG1 too, and it's just such a good way to seamlessly integrate vitamins, nutrients, and minerals into your day, especially in the morning. Both Michael and I drink AG1 in the morning. We like to do it before working out, and it just makes us feel energized and healthy. If you feel overwhelmed with all the wellness things, I think this is a great place to start to add one heaping scoop of greens to your water every single morning. New places, spaces, and especially foods can be hard on our gut. With AG1 Travel Packs, I can trust my body gets high-quality multivitamin, pre- and probiotics, and packs more no matter where I am. Now you get 10 travel packs. You guys, 10 travel packs and a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 K2 drops with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash skinny. That's drinkag1.com slash skinny. Check it out. I know. I had an incredible conversation with a friend of mine who happens to be a really brilliant um, gentleman. Gentleman. That makes him sound so old. He's in his 40s. I want you to describe me as a gentleman. (laughs) Gentleman. (laughs) I just aged myself. He's in his 40s. And he's so smart that he's having these very cerebral intellectual conversations with himself about the quality of the woman he's in a relationship with. And can she level up? And does she fit the mold of the woman that I would want to mother my children? And and he was really having the, 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 an amazing conversation with me and dice, I don't want to say dissecting, but exploring the possibilities. And I was asking myself silently, not discussing it with him. Is it because he's so smart and he's a little bit older and he was able to have that conversation? Because I think when we're lo- young, we're in love and I just don't know if we're foreseeing not thinking complications with, that you don't know about. Maybe or, not thinking with the right brain. You yeah, know, like I mean. I or, think, or the parenting thing is like next level of designing a relationship. And designing is a funny word, but I do believe that we have to start designing your marriage, your future, your home, your life, your love, your family, your children. You came to the right podcast. Well, we agree. You do? Yeah. Okay, we just did a whole podcast on creating your own future and designing okay, your life and being thoughtful oh, and that. being purposeful. And so many people are settling because society tells you you need to settle by a certain age. I mean, it's- girl, I I said this in that conversation. We are being raised in a society that is teaching us about good enough. We are marrying Mr. and Mrs. Good Enough. We are living in a space that's good enough. We are accepting good enough. And a lot of the transformational work that I do in the retreat work with women and men is to allow yourself, like the word extraordinary seems so big. Like we all have a blessed life. I have a blessed life. I live in gratitude. I live in gratefulness. I'm so blessed for my life. But I'm still reaching for extraordinary. 
because I can and because I will and because that's the commitment that I've made to myself. So if you're looking for an extraordinary partner, why not? Like why we're settling all around. It. I mean, well, I think that word makes people uncomfortable. It makes people uncomfortable. I think it makes people uncomfortable that that someone would want an extraordinary life in each area. You said today on the car ride up when we were having this conversation, you said, I don't want to be that person that says, oh, but no, no, he's a I good dad. Wanna, no, Explain I, what you said. I, I the said, but. I never want to be described as, but like, so for example, if you met me and you're like, hey, Michael, you're, you're, you're okay at business, but you're a great dad. Like, I would hate that. Or if you're like, hey, you're a great dad, or you're like, you're an okay dad, but you're great at fitness. Like, I never want to be the guy that's the but, right? I want to be like, but, oh, meaning, you know what I'm saying? Like, like meaning, meaning the dad, the amazing, meaning the daddying is making up for what you're not in other areas. What no, mean? just meaning like, if, if like basically you're cheap, someone's saying like, okay, you're okay here, but that's okay because you're, okay, you're <laughs> great. He wants here. to be extraordinary you in every area. I want to hold myself accountable. Like, I want to be in shape. I want to have a good business. I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good, I don't want to like, I don't want to just do one and not the other. Does that make sense? I think it's amazing. I think that you are unique and a unicorn and there aren't enough people who are brave enough or committed enough to high potential. And I really like to discuss the possibility, right? Cause we're learning. And even if it's scary and uncomfortable of never falling below that high standard that you hold for yourself. And that's not an easy space to live in and to be in. But what if you allowed yourself, you made a personal commitment <laughs> to never travel below that standard? Like, I think that the word extraordinary makes, if you say to, to your whole entire family and all your friends, I want to be extraordinary. What it does is it maybe points out where they're not being extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uncomfortable. But instead, what you're saying is we should all up level to be extraordinary. I think you're right. And I hadn't thought about that. I think you make a great point. It is uncomfortable. There's something about it that doesn't feel humble. But I think we need to get uncomfortable. And even in my family, like with my children, I'm like, get uncomfortable. Do it or don't do it. And if you're going to do it, come higher hell water. Freaking do it with commitment. Like even, <laughs> this might seem silly, we have a lot of family meals together, as many as we physically can. Even tonight when I leave here, I'm going to grind. I'm going to go to Westlake, pick up my son from football from here. And people listening, we're really far away because I want to be there to pick him up. And I'm going to come home and we're going to have dinner. And if my daughter's setting the table and she's phoning it in because she's rush rushing or disconnected, I'll look at the table and I'll be like, what do you, like, I didn't teach you how to set the table like that. If you're going to set the table, set the table right. Hold on. Like, hold, on hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We got to take a little detour here. We're going to take a little detour. Sorry to the audience. Brooke, First I'm coming all, over for dinner. This yeah. is what music is, to my ears. What does it look like to set the table ex in an extraordinary way? Okay, I want to hear me. this. So, because uh, maybe I'm fucking phoning in the table. No. I need to know how to set an extraordinary table. Well, number one. Okay. So, candles are lit. Okay. And even if they're little candles, okay. like the napkins folded, it's on the table. The okay. silverware is right. The glass isn't like in the middle of the is plate. Is it a linen like napkin or a paper? No, it's paper. Paper. Okay. It's paper. Let's okay. get real. Okay. And it's probably not paper plates unless we're really lazy, but okay. I'm not mad at that. Okay. I'm not mad at that. As long as we, as long as it's pretty. It looks okay. nice. Presentable. There's an intention. And it has vibe. Okay. And I'll go on and the lights are right. Okay. So that we're not like blasting Michael, fluorescent vibe. Michael just learned about a dimmer. Come on, dimmer, Michael. Oh, yeah. Listen, I had a dad that Come literally the, the, the lights. These this are, was the lights. These aren't nearly up. as bright as okay, the lights so are. Okay, so I'll child. walk in. I'll there's like, a dimmer. Cow. What else? And Anything there's probably else? like a nice playlist, like a home sweet home or like a nice loving playlist okay. on. And it's just it's ambiance. Right. And it doesn't matter if we're eating takeout. It doesn't matter if we're eating frozen food. Oh, I see you nodding your no, head. You know, no, keep going. Keep going. No, 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 well, no, no. Okay. So like as a woman, I feel you. It's about ambiance and it's about setting the mood. And, you know, I'll pivot for a second if I'm walking into my bedroom with Scott and the like lights are blaring and like, I'm like, babe, like I want some ambiance. I want to be seduced. I'm like, learning about ambiance. I want, sed I know. I oh want my God. I used to would say I want to be desired, but seduced, seduced. is a better word. Seduce me. Up. Don't stick it in before you feel me up. Oh my like, God. Give me a squeeze. Okay, Can Lauren, we just is, go on? Can Lauren, you take a journey? This is a family show. Can you take a journey <laughs> around my body? Take a journey <laughs> around listen. my body, bitch. The other hey, day, we got two nights away the from the other kids. day he asked me, do you want seven minutes in heaven? Oh, <laughs> when my well, kids were watching a show and I was like, okay. That's not bad. That's not a bad deal. 
put it in heaven. I said, Listen, you gotta put some effort into it. it can I three. can I use that line? Well, if I offered my man <laughs> seven minutes of heaven, oh my god, no, he would it was three. I, no, listen. That's being generous. Better than one. Our child it's better than one. <laughs> we were in this house. I'd like right some ambiance. I want to be seduced. And the I'm children seduced. are everywhere and there's people everywhere. And I was like, I need it. We need to go in the closet. But and... Brooke is saying to put intention behind everything you do from yeah, setting but seven the table. minutes of heaven was kind of poetic. I didn't have just time to light the candle and get it going. It's kind of a romantic question. Put some home sweet home music on. Home sweet home. I'm gonna share the playlist. Uh, with you this is also a very weird time. Okay, it was like wait, 10 a.m. We went seven. from family dinner to seven we're, minutes we're of heaven. Go, I'm sorry. We're gonna go back. <laughs> no, but I want to say one more thing about this. You know, I think we are living in an interesting time where people want to feel good rather than actually be good. And what I mean by that is like people are like the reason it's uncomfortable when say when people say, oh, like I want to be extraordinary is because you if you say that you maybe people are thinking, well, then that means other people can't be mm -hmm. right or like or other people know they aren't. And I think we're getting in this weird place now where people feel bad about saying they want to be great. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. and I don't think this has ever been before. And I, and I think you're right. And I and I I personally don't like it because if it's if if I'm you know as a new dad like I want my children to demand the most from themselves and of mm -hmm. course I want them to be good and all that but I want them to hold themselves to, to a, a high standard yeah, level high, up yeah I mean listen when I was a kid like th th that was I didn't I had a half Japanese mother so like there was no like you know of course you had to hold, you had to hold yourself high standard mm -hmm. like compliments were rare yeah and so you know. I think it's uncomfortable because people may feel they're out of integrity in certain mm -hmm. areas of their life. And it's easier to just say, don't worry, I'm OK, as opposed to saying, you know what, I could try a little harder. It's really it's such an amazing conversation because, you know, the word extraordinary. That's not like misinterpret it, right? So extraordinary could be that you're having a really shitty day and you don't feel like doing anything, but you took 11 minutes to go listen to a meditation to reset yourself. That might be your extraordinary moment for the day. It doesn't mean that it's big and beautiful and fabulous. It means that you're connected. And I love what you said about integrity. If you're meeting yourself with integrity, that might just mean that you're listening and you're you're dialed in and you're present and, you know, holding yourself to that standard and living in integrity means a lot of different things. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's easier to honest. just kind of phone it in, but like, you know, it, it takes discipline to be great in areas. Of life. And that doesn't just mean in your business, but like with your family. It takes discipline to be a good wife or a good husband, a good For father, sure. a good mother, For all these sure. things, right? You can't. And and I think people telling themselves that they don't have to hold themselves to that standard, but then also demanding those results are living in delusion. I think some people don't even feel worthy to do it, to be honest. I mean, I, I posted something the other day and I, I'm spending a lot of time thinking about this. I'm writing a body of work on it, but like protecting your boundaries, like be willing to be worthy of protecting your own boundaries. And that might be the boundaries of carving out time for love and romance and <laughs> yeah, true. that might be let me you ask know. you a question lauren <laughs> would, <laughs> would you rather me not take that time to do that i had to you know like that's the thing is i think joking aside i want my wife to know that at any given moment she could be desired like that you know in the middle of the, even the kids are like because i think also again like people start phoning it in in relationships like oh like the kids are there so it's we better not hard, do it no, of course it's hard i mean it is I, I mean, it is hard to get into the mood and to be in that sexy space when you know the kids are on the other side of the door. Like, I, I do get that. I mean, I, 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 I'm going to keep it real. Like, it, yes, set the mood. Doors, up, but it is hard. Like, you have to, sometimes you have to, like, roll up a towel and stick it underneath the door crack <laughs> as if I think it's muffing up. Yeah, I, I, I jammed a door wedge in there. I locked Mom, us in. Before I, Mom, can I, I, can I want to go back to Wild On. But before I do that, just because you brought it up, you have to tell me what you're going and cooking for dinner and how you're whipping it up, like, so efficiently and quickly. For four children and picking up your son all within this well, small window. The older, my my oldest one is not at home, so I'll be honest, it's three. And and normally on a day like this, I use a slow cooker crock pot all the time. Love a good crock pot. Honestly, I can throw it in there in the morning and it'll be ready by the time we get home. What and brand? It, and it could be, well, I gotta look it up on, on Amazon. I'm okay. the queen of Amazon and we'll okay. find the brand. But I'm talking like, I'll put two packages of chicken in there. I'll get a bottle jar from Trader Joe's of like teriyaki sauce or salsa. I'll throw it in there with garlic and onions, put the lid on it, put it on low. Sounds pretty good. And by the time I get home, there's like another tool on Amazon that you can separate the chicken with. They look like two claws. It's like amazing pulled chicken. And it'll last for four days. And I'll make a big pot of rice and I'm out, I'm off the hook. That is such a good tip Five for a quick recipes. meal. Yeah. This, there's been so many people that come on this podcast that cook dinner at night, but it's so overwhelming. That does yeah. not sound overwhelming to me. I want easy and efficient. I want it to be mindful and yummy, but I mean, we're, we're busy. 
Okay, we're I'm, busy. I'm getting a crock pot. You yeah. will see yeah. a crock. <laughs> I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna share the recipes with you. No, no, ki- honestly, please. Will amazing you post it on solution. your Instagram story so everyone can see this yes, when I this will. goes live? We have to show us pulling yes, apart the chicken. You know I will. How to mindfully pull apart the Listen, chicken? Listen, it's either that or you're boiling, deboning, and get, like this is the easiest recipe of all time. And honestly, I love it. I'll make a pot of it that is so big, and then my son will roll in with like four football players. And I will feed all of them for two days. This one pot. I of bet your chicken. son's football player friends <laughs> love your pulled chicken, and I'm sure they love you making them pulled chicken. <laughs> I hope they do. <laughs> I'm Brooks sure they love that. We're going to Brooke's house again for dinner. <laughs> My poor son. Uh, well. <laughs> terrible. Okay. We couldn't so, figure out anywhere else to eat. <laughs> God, Taylor terrible. wants to come over for pulled chicken. He's salivating. Everyone's invited to my house for dinner. Okay. <laughs> so when you were on Wild on. What was that like balancing all these different things? And then you're going through a divorce. How are you doing all this when you're traveling to 40 countries? Like, what was that like? It was it was a lot, lot, lot. Um, That was the beginning of the relationship. So I wasn't going through the divorce there, but I was figuring out what it's like to be a mother. And I was figuring out without a lot of skills, how to host a show live on the road. So I was kind of making it up as I went along. And I didn't know anything different. So I was just managing it all. I, your question is how, I don't know. I didn't know anything else. When you are known for Wild On, that's how you come into the scene and then you want to transition to other things. What is that like? That was really hard because Wild On went from when I first started being this really cool travel show, having a little bit of TNA, covering the parties, a little bit of culture, um, and a little bit of geography to then becoming this like crazy ass party show with the confusion often with Girls Gone Wild. Back in the day, you remember, so you had Wild on and then you had that crazy Joe Francis, Girls Gone Wild. Oh, that so was those all, two. Oh, wow. Well, huh. it was very easy to, and it was E, which aired in 120 countries around the world. So I could be covering a body of work in Jamaica that could have been like at some, I don't know, provocative location with nudity in every other country, it was like you're seeing everything in here in America. They were kind of masking it off. So the show, I think, took on a little bit more of a party and a little bit more of um, a provocative vibe before I left. So for many people in transitioning from that show, I was always going to be that quintessential travel girl, which was cool. But I also had to um, mindfully kind of take on some other more respectable opportunities without downplaying it though. I mean, it was a great show. I love when people come up to me and go, Oh, I went to Ibiza. I went to spring break in Cancun. I went to Italy because I lived vicariously through you around the world, or you made me want to go climb the Mayan Riviera, like all of these cool things, which I really loved. But to a lot of people, I'll always be that wild on girl. And that's okay. Was it hard to be in a constant party state or did you just separate it? People would never know this, but I was pregnant with Naraya on the road. Then I had Naraya, got back on the road three months after I gave birth to her. So I would walk in, do my stand-ups, do my walk out, do the outros, and let my crew go in there and cover all the drunk craziness. I was sober for most of the show. Wow. So I thought, everybody thought I was this party girl. I was pregnant. Like the, the camera shot was like belly, boobs. Like it was less and less of me because my belly was growing, my boobs were growing. And the camera shot was getting smaller and smaller. I was on a bikini in the beach. Oh, I remember the world, watching when I was little. But it was little. less and less of me. Go back and look. Like you'll, you'll, it's I remember ridiculous. You, like I remember you so well it's from ridiculous. that show. Like, and you started seeing less and less of me because my belly was growing. So nobody knew it. I didn't ever notice that. <laughs> Didn't you wonder why my breasts were so big? No, I just thought you, I mean, you do have great breasts. I never thought anything of it. Thank you. I'll go back I, and watch. So funny. I'm sure Taylor will yeah. too. Come on, Taylor. Uh, um, Taylor's, back there Taylor's Google. ferociously yeah. Googling it. <laughs> Taylor, don't do it. Um, but the magic of television. And so that was, that was a lot. And then, you know, packing up my daughter and my life and then continuing that for a few years was a lot. It was amazing. I, I, I laugh about it now because that was reality television before reality television. I did my own hair. I did my own makeup. I had two young producers. Yeah, no kidding. We we're like on the road where now, you, you know, now our, our, our needs and our contracts and our desires in any deal, they're like they're big. You yeah. couldn't even go make a show like that today. No, because no there's, one wants to do their own hair and makeup. There's no way. Right. So you we were able, not good at it, though. We, we were able to get in there and be ghetto and have a small crew and, you know, 
bring to life travel like a local, which was really cool. What was right? the the thing that you did after Wild On that you felt was like something that you were really proud of? Um, CBS Rockstar. So I did that show with Mark Burnett. Okay. That was my first network gig. It was amazing. It was three nights on CBS, bringing unsigned talent to life. Amazing rock and roll. We were looking, um, the first season was in excess. Um, Rockstar in excess looking for the replacement for Michael Hutchins. Epic talent. We did three nights. Everybody lived in the Rockstar mansion. So we had one night reality, two nights prime time. It was amazing. Is everyone flirting with you? <sighs> yeah. Not really, because I'm on stage. Okay. So not really. I can't believe that. Not really. I mean, I'm on stage, live audience, rockers that are scared shitless to get up there and showcase their talent. And then you've got the band and Dave Navarro. Like, uh, not really. It was such a, doing live television like that, you know, you've got stage managers. Like, there's so much going on. No. So is this? The next season was with Tommy Lee. <laughs> that was a little bit different. <laughs> and that was, that was like a little, and I was like running. I was running. <laughs> She's just running like the away drama. from him. Just like the drama, the drama, <laughs> the drama. So, are, are also you pregnant again on that show? By pregnant the way. again. I was pregnant on every show. You're pregnant again. And Trying Tommy's to be a cool still chasing her. Tommy's show. chasing you, pregnant. I mean, I, I ran faster. It was fine. Okay. It was fine. Um, so, I don't think he cared. So, is this? Are you divorced by then, or no? So, I was actually in an. So, yes, divorced from Garth in a new relationship with David. And pregnant with rain. Okay. During that rock and roll show. And David was huge on Baywatch. I remember him on Baywatch. Yeah. Is this before or after or during his Baywatch um, fame? After. And David and I knew each other since we were 21 and 22. So we always had a love affair. We had a very long relationship. We had a very deep friendship. And then we finally pulled it together and decided to really give it a go. And then we had two more children. We had two children together. And <laughs> is, have you felt like with David, you've been able to maintain a friendship with him now? We have a great relationship. We parent together. Um, super close relationship. Like so, we speak every day. I would consider us to be the best of friends. Um, I'm still really close with his family. I didn't divorce them. We live in the same neighborhood. We like... We have dinners together. He'll so come over for family dinner. What's even the advice and I. to someone? If someone, the different, you have the advice, I feel like. What's the advice of being able to have an amicable relationship with an ex-husband? Like, think, what's the difference? I am feeling a shift. I think everyone is really starting to realize the importance of building muscle. I'm personally learning all about it. I've learned so much in the last two years about how to build muscle in ways that don't fry your nervous system. And we were lucky enough to have Dr. Shannon, the creator of Evlo Fitness on the show. And she really opened my eyes to how important it is for us to make sure we're working our muscles on a daily basis. The problem for me is that I don't want to always go to a gym. It's way more effective than slamming your body into the ground for a brief period of time and then stopping because you're hurt. It's created by a doctor, Shannon. She's on the podcast. You have to listen. And she's a doctor of physical therapy. And she's created this platform, this method that basically uses research on muscle growth and combines aspects of Pilates, yoga, and weightlifting into every class. I am such a fan of this. It's been one of the reasons that I've been able to lose 50 pounds post giving birth. And I just feel like everyone has to start somewhere. I'm so excited because Dr. Shannon agreed to give all of our listeners one month free. So when you guys use the code skinny at checkout, you get one whole month free. Visit evlofitness.com to learn more and try their membership for 30 days with code skinny. Visit evlofitness.com to learn more and try their membership for 30 days with code skinny. Work out smarter, not harder, and build muscle. This episode of The Skinny Confidential is brought to you by Poise Ultra Thins. After two kids, I have learned a lot of motherhood tips and tricks. <laughs> and even through you guys, through DMs, I've learned a lot. And recently, I learned that one in two women over 20 have bladder leaks. So period pads aren't designed for pee. So enter Poise Ultra Thins. If you've had a baby, maybe you haven't had a baby and you have bladder leaks. I know a lot of women experience this if they're jumping on a trampoline or maybe they're working out then we have you covered because Poise Ultra Thins fit and flex with your body. This is unlike a period pad that's super lumbering and heavy. 
you have to check this out if you do have bladder leaks. I think it's such a good hack because it provides protection. So you don't have to be worried about like getting a little dribble. (laughs) Taylor, don't get excited. The best thing about these ultra thins are that they offer them with and without wings. So I know some people like wings on them so you can like sort of wrap them around your underwear, but some people don't. So you can like have your preference. It's so incredible that Poise saw a white space and they decided that we will not be wearing period pads if we have bladder leaks, but we will be wearing Poise Ultra Thins. This episode of The Skinny Confidential is brought to you by Poise Ultra Thins. You have to check this out if you do have bladder leaks. It takes Poise. Learn more at Poise.com. I like to sneak whatever I can sneak in with my kids. And what I mean by that is when it comes to water... I like to get creative. And one of the things I do is I like to keep my kids hydrated with electrolytes. And how I do that is with Harmless Harvest Organic Coconut Water. If you've not tried this coconut water, it is the best coconut water on the planet. It's my favorite. It's always been my favorite. It has like a pink hue sometimes because it's so organic. It's so real. It's one ingredient. And I just feel so good about giving this to my kids because they're getting their electrolytes They're having some coconut water and they feel like they're getting sort of like a treat. It is very, very hot where I am right now in San Diego. And this is like perfect by the pool. We do it over ice in their sippy cups. I'll put it in a champagne glass. Sometimes I'll add a little something, something to it. It's just the ideal drink if you want to feel refreshed. Michael loves it. The whole family loves it. We even have it on the podcast tables when guests come in because they'll typically reach for it over water. Harmless Harvest Organic Coconut Water. They keep things organic, which is amazing. If you're looking for a way to cool down this summer or you're feeling dehydrated, we got you covered. Go to harmlessharvest.com and use promo code SKINNY. You get 20% off your first order. I have used my own code for my kids. Or you can use their helpful store locator to find the best location or a retailer near you. I think it's choosing love. I I love David. I always love David. My new man knows I love David. It's just how it is. I've loved him since the moment I met him. I've loved him since we were 21 years old. We weren't great husband and wife. And then when we divorced, it separated. It was the saddest time ever. It was epically sad and painful. But we both knew that it was time for us to stop living as husband and wife and having a very complicated relationship. We knew that it was necessary for our children. And then we chose our children. We took the high road and we designed, if you can imagine, and this is really possible, everybody who's fighting the fight, I know how fucking hard it is. We designed a working relationship as exes. We are, he is the greatest ex-husband of all time. Like he's my best friend. It's crazy. What does some of that design look like? Because I think there's people, if they're, if they're going down that path, I don't, I don't think we've ever talked about this, like what that looks like Mm -hmm. post, because to your point, you have these children together. You have this relationship. Mm-hmm. That was a great relationship. You have a friendship. It, it Tragically like... painful in the beginning. Sure. Because we had tremendous chemistry, a deep love, and we were so committed and fought the best fight we could to raise our kids together until we realized that change was necessary. Then we took a pause and then there's the pain of dating other people. Oh, my God. Oh. Do you have to like take time from each other as well for yeah, a while? Like you have to did. like distance. Yeah, We did. And then... I don't know if everybody would agree or has experienced this who's listening, but there's also the missing. Like I had kind of a different (laughs) approach to it. There's the missing when you're not together anymore that's painful and it's necessary. So we were able to stay in each other's lives and kind of love each other through that pain of missing each other. I mean, there were periods of time where he's like, well, can we still cook together and hang out together and have family dinners? I'm like, well, David, if we keep doing that, then neither one of us get to move on. And oh, so we can't God. really do that yet. We were so used to doing that. Like it, it was it was a very complicated, necessary separation. It was a loving separation. And we agreed that we were going to stay in each other's lives and love each other through those difficult times. And when I say what, how close we are, I mean, we have dinners with Scott. Like we'd probably travel together, but I don't really want to do that because like... We've got to move on and I want him to find someone that's going to love him and, and bring joy to his life. And um, what is it like when you start dating other people? Like, wh- how do you do that? 
Is it like a liaison, a finesse? It's What's weird. It? It's hard. Like, do you have to you call him? You don't even know this part, Lauren, anyways. Don't worry for yeah. you. Well, I, I don't know. I, I for pray my and wish when that I you'll never be in it. When I move on to my second husband, I just want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it's weird and it's different. And I had to do a lot of work to realize that love looks different, feels different, sounds different, is different. And then when you met Scott, was it love at first sight? <sighs> It was, wow, oh my God, what the fuck at first sight? <laughs> it wasn't love at first sight because I, I, I had that once in my life and I, 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 I wasn't looking for that. But I, I, I definitely felt that oof, like that wow, the, the second that I saw him, that oh my God, what's this? Where'd you guys meet? We met at Wally's in Santa Monica, which is a bar I was, I know, Amazing. Funny, it's so cheesy. I was having a glass of wine with, um, with a girlfriend and, and, uh, a gentleman that's like a father figure to me. And Scott was there with his friends. So it was definitely unexpected and it was meant to be. And I swore I would never do it again. I swore I would never get married again. I swore I would never live together. I swore I would never get engaged again. It was going to be my kids. And then I was going to love and date. But I I knew that I was never, ever going to do it again in the way that I committed to David. And I was kind of having fun anyway. I thought this was going to be a great summer and I was going to date. And I was, it was a disaster. I wasn't good at that at all. And then I met an extraordinary man. What does it look like when <laughs> someone hits on Brooke Burke at Wally's? How, what's what's the pickup line? I, I, I'd like to send this to a lot of my yeah, guy friends. It was actually pretty amazing. Okay. And, there we um, go. and I will say that I really wanted to be picked up on and I wanted to date and I wasn't dating. All the men listening have a no giant one, note card. Guys, out right now. no one was talking to me. No one was walking up to me. I was a girl, I swear to God, that would go to Mastro's and sit at the bar because I'm a big girl and have a beautiful steak dinner and a glass of wine by myself, not looking for love, but looking for company and very open to sharing that seat next to me and maybe making a new friend. And it was never happening. And I and I and I'm not like or poor. I'm not saying, oh, poor me. I was not dating and I wanted to date. I wasn't being set up. I wasn't on a dating app. It might no be one was a little DMing intimidating. Me. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, okay, but get over it. So I was, but get over it. Like I was ready, willing, and available. No, but that's the secret because our friend I don't even Taylor get DMs. back here. Now I'm gonna get weird DMs. Oh, you're gonna get. I dick swear picks. to God, dick no, but listen, Taylor, I don't get dick pics. I mean, he's in a relationship now, but this guy, he just charges. He says hi to every girl, everybody. How you know? did Scott come up to you at Wally's? He walked right up to me. See, that's the move. What do you say? Rule number three. That's walked number right three. up to me. Completely ignored me. Ignored my really hot blonde girl, stylist girlfriend. And I was sitting with um, a gentleman named Larry, who we call Papa, who's like a grandfather to my children, who honest to God is in his 70s. Distinguished gentleman, hat, like all Gucci'd out, like a fabulous man with a cane. Okay. I don't think it looked like we were on a date. He looks like my father. And Scott walks right up to the bar and says, Hello, sir. I really like your hat. He had like on a Nick Fouquet hat. And I'm like, my jaw dropped. I'm like, this guy's so foxy. And he completely <laughs> ignored me. And I'm like, what the F? And he walked away. And I look at my stylist. I'm like, Dude. and we always joke around about this because you got to like give credit where credit. I was like, that guy was so foxy. What the fuck? He didn't even say hi. Like, he didn't even say hi to you, me. Like, we're like crickets. This is the story of my life, Isabel. I'm like, I, no one talks to me. Guy walked away and I'm like, what the hell? And then he came back. He came back. But when he came back, I was already gathering my things. I had to get my stuff out of Isabel's car. Papa was driving me home. I really couldn't stay. I was in, I was in the city. I live in Malibu. And we had already got the valet. So he walked up to me, invaded my space, grabbed me by the arm, not in a creeper way, but you would interpret that as creepy. And he said, hi, I'm Scott. Come and have a drink with me. And I was like stuttering. I was like, uh, I, I would love to have a drink with you, but I can't. And it only was because, which I guess sounded like a rejection. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And my, that most, was that most, a rejection? Most people would take, most And men, I didn't mean yeah. it like that. I just was like, ah, da, 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 da. And he goes, no, 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 come and have a drink with me. And like kind of grabbed me by the arm off of the bar stool, but not in a weird, like who does that nowadays? No one would dare touch you or well, bear de You bear know, we're living different times. I know. And now he went now for you it. get hit with the taser. Wait, you know? he went for it. And inside I was like, I think this might be my man. Like, this guy is so fucking brave. This guy just invaded my space, grabbed me by the arm, and didn't take no for an answer. I think this might be my man. You see, though, but this is Wait, why... Isn't that so messed? The, the, the no, times are no. so fucked up because you're... Women want, Taylor, a, women, bad advice. Women want a little dominance. No, no, but, we so. want to be ignored. No, but listen. Brooke Burke is isn't on the show <laughs> saying that 
She was grabbed. I know, and I liked it. And she liked it. And, and, ignored, that, was, and that was the right and approach. Ignored and and I now liked this it. is the guy. But if you do that, if you if if you Careful, give that guys. advice in a 2023 world, here's well, what it is: I know. women is... and men do not like desperate energy. You cannot be desperate energy in any facet of a business relationship, of a friendship. We of can a, smell desperation. We can smell do we it. agree? No one wants desperate energy. Everybody can. And Scott, to me, sounds like he came up, he asserted that he is not desperate because he ignored her. And then he came back <laughs> and he gave a little bit of dominance. Super confident. That is the recipe for success, in my opinion, for a relationship. So. It's a good foundation. I'm going to talk really fast so I won't bore everybody no, with the no, story, no, but you have to hear the next fast. part of it. So then I say, I'm so, so sorry. I really can't have that drink. And I really wanted that drink. I so, you have no idea how bad I wanted that drink. So I'm so sorry. I can't. I leave. My girlfriend's getting the valet. I walk outside and she's like, well, what happened? Did, did you give him his, your number? Did you get his number? And I'm like, no, I, I just said I had to leave. And he just let me leave. Like I just walked off into the sunset. We we're never to be seen again. And he just let me leave. So Mr. Super Confident, who went in for the grab, let me leave. And I think he maybe felt like it was a rejection. Yeah, I mean, Do you think? yeah I'm sure. So she goes, ah, going back in there. And I'm like, it's about wait, wait, no. She goes storming back in there, grabs Scott and goes, hey, <laughs> she's really spunky. <laughs> Can you imagine some blonde, little skinny blonde chick doing this to you? She goes, hey, what's your name? And he goes, I'm Scott. She pulls out her phone and she goes, do you want her number or what? And he's like, he didn't even know what to say. It was really aggressive. And he goes, okay. She goes, let me give you her number and don't be that guy. He's like, and she goes, you call her tonight. And she comes walking out. And I'm like, what happened? She goes, I gave him your number. I'm like, you what? Like my, for me, part of the dating part, I think it's like my phone. It's my kids. It's my life. Like, I don't know. I'm weird like that. If you call me on my phone, I know you or not. Or you didn't want just like a stranger I having just your didn't, number. Yeah, she yeah. goes, that's how it works, Brooke. It's the only way you're ever going to hear from him again. Well, no shit. Well, so, wait, hold on. Did he call me that night? Yeah, did he call you that night? And by now it's like eight o'clock. Called me that night. And he was like, I'd really like to have that drink. So what'd you guys do? That night? Yeah. I See? <gasps> I know. I, and my, my inner dialogue was like, booty call, no, bad idea. Well, you, I mean. But you know what I said to myself? I'm going to go have that drink. And so? And I did. Where so, was it? Did you guys he, go back to Wally's? We didn't go back to Wally's. He goes, Palisades or Malibu. And I was like, I have my choice. I'm not driving. I don't know you to Palisades. Come to Malibu. And trying to find a place that's open in Malibu by 9 p.m. now. And yes, it looked like a booty call. I know. Sorry, kids, for listening. We, we met at the Malibu Beach Inn and we had that one drink and it was amazing. And um, before, 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 before we, I committed to that, I said, what's your last name on the text? I had to, I had to do some Googling. And he said, do you want a bio? And I said, yeah, I do. And who so he it? sent Everybody me that. Knows. And then he goes, what's your last name? He didn't know who I was. No so way. He says, he says he didn't. And I said, don't Google me. And now he was like, wait, he didn't know who you were. That's what he said, which was another him. great line. Another great line. Well, I, I believe, believe I actually I believe, believe him. him. Well, so I said, please don't Google well, me. Because that was, I was like, don't Google me. Well, where do you, you start? Gonna, there's 600 pages You never on know what's going to come up. Well, it's just hard no, with public people. Good. You don't want to come in and be like, I already Googled you. Well, I, got it's all the, weird. I got all the clippings, you know? It's weird, but it, you yeah. kind of, that's what we do. And yeah. so he gives me this little bio, which was cute and cool. And he seemed respectable. And then he texts me again. And this is where he had me. And he said, one more thing I forgot. I am a happily divorced father of two beautiful children. And I was like, oh, now you have my attention. Let's go have that drink. That's really cute, too, because it lets right? you know that he's on good terms. He's happy. I know. He's divorced. He hits a lot of the things. I know. He has kids. I know. That right? sentence, if you're divorced and you're trying to hit on someone, is a real panty drop. I'll have to keep, keep that one. <laughs> Remember your yeah, wife yeah, number yeah, two. Hold this clip for wife number two. But that, it's true for like one. people that are dating and you think you want to downplay that or somebody won't, might not love that. You know, you're in a divorce or you're divorced or you have children. Like, just lay it on the line. Be up like, front. Be up yeah. front. I yeah. thought it was hot. I, I mean, this is the way to hit on a girl if anyone is listening and needs some tips. You know, I like careful talk, of the grab though. We talk to all, a lot of like a lot of our friends are single and you're like, and, and there's Mine a lot too. of there's a lot of game playing now. And I don't understand it because I love a game. Just, yeah, but it just seems I love like, a game. I do love a game. It's just a little like, game. What do you mean? How do you think I got you? No, no, How did but, you guys like? I mean, I guess everybody. Knows we met it, when then. we were twelve. It's a whole long story. <gasps> but just, I played games for about twenty years. <laughs> continue playing games. I, I do. Yeah. No, but you sometimes know, like, I still don't we want a little. Call. We want a little. Sure, little but I think like the men, like the, a lot of men are like, "What should I text?" Okay, what's the? I'm like, just it's a little strange to me. I think it's very rare that people are just upfront and honest and vulnerable. 
Yes, I would agree. I do. I, I, I think a little hair of a game, though, to keep them a, a little like a little dangle bit. of the carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Are we in a game right now? I feel like I'm in a game. You, know, you never know. <laughs> like, I, I avoid your calls sometimes. You guys are you talking always... about, like, your next spouse. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, keeps you on your <laughs> hey, toes. <laughs> we did, you know, we did a sexy stranger one time in uh, Malibu, but it was so awkward. She did it completely wrong. <laughs> I did it wrong. One of our favorite, what's it, Giorgio Baldi over yeah. there? Yeah. Okay, so sexy stranger, you're supposed to go to a bar and yeah. like ideally, like she, I pick her up yeah. if she dress up. Were you you and Scott up? should do this. Were at you Wally's. in like a wig or did no? no she, yeah, she fully You should do this at Wally's and but have she, him grab you. But she went but, to one of our favorite places that we go all the time and scheduled a reservation. And so don't we're go to sitting Georgia there Wally, in wigs. It's too small. In Georgia, people Wally. think you're a bunch of freaks. No. And people know us in there. And we're oh like, God. And like this did you look like a different person? Yeah, it looks like. And that's where rumors start. That's bad. Of course, and I'm sitting there like. To open, like, who knows? I have like a mustache on or something. And now they stupid. have no respect for you. And they're like, what are these? They're like, I saw those two. What are they doing in Giorgio Baldi? So now that you you have Scott, and it's easy to blend with David. It sounds like it's easy. I I I have to give David huge credit because he really encouraged the kids to accept him and let them know that it was okay to accept him and love him. Wow. And I've been on the other side of that, and that, that's you know another big part of blending a family separating, designing a working relationship, if you don't allow your children that freedom to be open and receive and eventually love someone or just be open to that relationship, friendship, whatever it might be, then there's they're just there's so much in the way of that that they don't allow themselves the comfort. They have guilt and, and being close to a new person. So David was amazing with that. Scott's really easy to love and like and he's an honorable man. He's a he has a he's a quality man, an amazing father. So it, it was easy and I've been in it before where it wasn't in other relationships and it's a disaster. I think you need to write a, a book that's, and maybe you already are, it's already Thank in the you. works, but I feel like a book and a guide to navigating Thank all of you. this. It's impressive. It's so you do it with um, el- 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 very eloquent. I appreciate that. I, I had conversations about doing it before and I always said no because I thought I haven't figured it out and I'm still getting it wrong and it's not successful yet. And I've had two divorces and like, who am I to speak about that? But now, now I feel like there's little things that you do to come out on the other side of it with love and acceptance and respect and integrity. Maybe a podcast. You need something yeah, like I feel you. like people because you've, you're actually a practitioner and someone who's been through it thank you. and you've tried all different kinds of ways and seen what works and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. And it seems like you really got to the other side. Thank you. I, I think it's style. I think it's tone and timing. I think it's self-respect. I think it's meeting your partner with respect. And my, when I say partner, I include David to be that partner, too. Like for life, we're raising our kids. Um, and I I define really clear boundaries and. Um, I'm lucky that my kids are accepting and I'm lucky that Scott's kids accept me. And I'm lucky that David is a strong enough man to allow that. I mean, I mean, honestly, like, you have to take your ego. Thank out you, it. David. Check your ego. Yes. And we had a lot of ego in our marriage. Oh, my God. It was part of our problem. We both did. And we were young and hot headed. And But it's worked out. It's worked out. Thank God. I have to ask you the question that I'm sure every single person who's listening wants to know. How do you have four kids and look so good? What is like Thank what you. I would love to know your pillars of what you do. Um, for example, do you eat a lot of meat? Do you do sure. weights? Do you do Pilates? Like what are your pillars that you stand by? I really love to simplify it for people because I design this lifestyle for many men and women. I started my app to be able to teach people how to do it with a limited amount of time and do it and do it well. I used to eat five meals a day. I used to weigh my food. I was probably more voluptuous as a younger woman. I was in that gold gym phase. You guys are too young to probably even remember that. But working really hard to maintain um, my body. And now I spend less time and I do it more efficiently and I work out smarter and differently. So I intermittent fast. Big believer of that. It's the easiest hours? thing I've ever done. An eight-hour eating window, 16 hours of rest. I'm not... Uh, much of a rule follower in life. I believe in a healthy lifestyle and boundaries. If I go to dinner late, I'm not really counting the clock if I'm starving. I will tell everybody you will not be hungry if you intermittent fast properly. And it's not for that chick that's just skipping breakfast. 
and binging. Tell That's us not intermittent fasting. Exactly what you mean. Like, like let's take today. And it's confusing if you research it. So yes. intermittent fasting means that you are giving your body and your gut a break and time to repair. Most of the time you're sleeping. So I woke up today, had a really busy day. I can't even tell you all the things that I did today. But I um, taught my workout class, swept my face off, knew that I was going to have a long day and I was going to be on the road. So I had a shake at about 1130 noon. That was my first meal. I broke my fast. But in that shake, if somebody were to ask me if, they, if I count calories, hell no. There's probably more calories in my one shake that most people who are dieting, which I hate that word, have in an entire day. So my shake has um, a, a superfood powder, almond milk, maybe MCT oil, which is a lot of fat, almond butter, super fat, not a lot of sugar, but a little bit. Um, maybe cinnamon for antioxidants, like a lot of different things, but it's heavy, frozen banana. I never ate a banana as a younger woman. Would never eat a banana. Are you making the shake or does someone make it for I you? I usually make it at home and I'll usually double or triple it up for my kids. So okay. I'm all about saving time. Today I was at Rafi's teaching my class, so I grabbed a shake to go and then I hit the road. But generally speaking, I'll have one delicious, filling, high calorie, high fat shake. That breaks my fast. I have coffee in the morning. So you broke it at 11 o'clock. Is that like black, black coffee doesn't break no. the fast? Well, see, here's the thing. So I do coffee with half and half. Okay, but still. You could do coffee with full cream. I was a non-fat girl my whole life. Non-fat milk, it's loaded in sugar. Non-fat everything, it's full of shit, sugar. So high fat would be full cream. Think of it like an Italian coffee, half and half full cream. I never used to drink half and half. Is there a brand of half and half that you drink? Um, an org- whatever's organic, I think, uh, uh, Horizon, I don't know, whatever I get at Just Whole Foods. Just like an organic cream. Nothing fancy. Okay, so, okay, an so organic. you're having a coffee with half and half. And by the way, that's a lot of fat, but it's no sugar. Right. So I'm full, and I have two of those. Huh. Yeah, sugar's what kills people. I have two cups of coffee, and that's like an Italian creamy coffee. So I froth my milk, I have my coffee, and I'm full. And then I'll have a second one, because I need energy, because I got a lot of stuff to do. Then I'll work out or I'll teach my class. Then I have a big shake and then I'm kind of satisfied. So on most days, I I haven't had anything since then. So you'll stop eating after your shake until I'm full dinner. and I'm satisfied. I, I get that. I'm full the same and I, way. And I'm, I'm not someone who wants to sit and eat all these meals all the time. So I get what you're saying. And if I had a lunch, a late meeting, because I do like to eat. I'm not, I like, I enjoy eating. I would have, for example, a Cobb salad that maybe had a little cheese in there, a little bacon. I'm not afraid of dressing. I'm not afraid of olive oil. I would go have sushi. I would have grilled salmon and some vegetables. I would have a Caesar salad with chicken. A lot of people that are dieting are like, I can't eat that. There's so many calories in that dressing. I don't mind that fat. Avocados, olive oil, nuts. Um, It's so good for your skin. So good for our hair, our brain, our skin, our nails. So I had to retrain my brain. Now I eat a lot of good fats. Dinner, and I also eat rice. Look at the Asian culture. And I don't do brown rice. It has more calories. It's too heavy. I try to keep it pretty simple and basic and clean, but I eat rice. I what eat kind quinoa, of rice? Jasmine rice, basmati rice, sushi rice. And so when I you love have rice. dinner. See, that's the thing. Is like I told you, like my grandma's rice. full Japanese. My mom's half. And we grew up white rice. All, we didn't have brown rice. It was just a thing. And if you look at that culture, Japanese, like that, you know, it's thriving look, on that. Exactly. And I love rice. And some people would say it's too many carbs and it's a staple and it's too filling. You really do have to listen to your body. But for me, a typical day would be my shake. It would be a big lunch if I was not, you know, I I would time that. Because lunch is, for me, a big meal. I don't like to eat a big meal before I go to bed. Right. And dinner would be steak, chicken, salmon, maybe soup, a really crunchy, healthy salad, lots of vegetables. Um, I drink a lot of water. I drink a lot of green tea. I'll have a glass of wine if I need it. I'd rather do tequila and be a little bit more organic and no sugar. So if I was really being strict, I would have tequila on the rocks with maybe an orange wedge. Um, But I eat and I eat well and I love to cook because I know what I'm putting into my body and I'll do a lot of vegetables, a lot of salads, lean proteins. If I'm starving, I'll have a handful of macadamia nuts. Maybe I'll grab a few dates. If you're out at Wally's, what are you ordering? (laughs) I don't love the food at Wally. Wally. Okay, Sorry, let's say everyone. you're out. You're going, know, you're going out to Wally's. dinner. What's your I'm order? I'm going to order um, a filet mignon with like tomatoes and onions or a Caesar salad or sauteed spinach, a side of vegetables. I'm always going to have a salad. I'm always going to drink a lot of water before I eat. If you're hungry, you're probably dehydrated. So if you're hungry and you're not drinking enough water, you are thinking you're hungry and you're really dehydrated. So I'll drink 
sometimes my body weight in water. So whatever your body weight is, change it to ounces. It's an amazing flush and cleanse. And you're not hungry because you're full from the water. Um, yeah, anywhere. And by the way, if I go to an Italian restaurant and I want to have pasta, I have pasta. And I'll have a bottle of wine with Scott. And then tomorrow I'll get back on my program. I don't do that Sounds all the like time. you don't stress about it. I don't stress about it. I don't do guilt about it. I design a healthy lifestyle and a nutritional program that's sustainable, that works. And honestly, my shake is so yummy. It's like a milkshake. Can you please put the shake yeah. on your Instagram story I will story put it too. on there. And With I the have, chicken. <laughs> if you click on the longevity button or even click on recipes, you'll find it all. So longevity is a superfood blend that I did a collab with. I put two scoops every day. I make it for my kids. It's so good. It's cacao. I'm going to try it. See, cacao good for you, Lauren. You, I've heard you talk about Sun Life too. You like Sun Life. I used to go there every day and I was spending 20 bucks on a shake. <laughs> And then they have the billionaire that's like a $27 shake. I'm like, what the frick is wrong with me? Khalil, what the hell, man? Khalil, I love you, Khalil. Khalil, my, make a my Brooke Burke smoothie. Khalil. Here, here, I think that you guys should do a, a collab and make a Brooke Burke smoothie. Come on, Khalil. I mean, my, my, it was my daughter's first job was at Sun Life, and I love Khalil. But by the time you take four kids in there, I just spent $100 on a smoothie. <laughs> Khalil, get real, dude. <laughs> I love you. Know you. He, he lives out in Texas with us I now. Know. I know. Mean, yes, I didn't yeah. know that. And then I would line up all those fantastic. What about the billionaire? It was like $27. With the bone Bill broth Klostrum. is my favorite. So I make bone broth at home too. Why do you oh, have what? to put out so many podcasts? So I got a 40 Do you make bone broth in your crock pot? I make it in the crock pot for two days. It's the greatest thing okay, ever. Okay, you need to do a collab with <laughs> crock pot. Make it like a nice, pretty white. You're I right. Could, I'm not joking. Mine's you, like brick red. It's yeah, so Yeah, make a d- delicious we looking. We have a good crock pot, Lauren. You just and keep kicking it And then also Sun Life. Because it'd gonna, be so cool to like be able to Postmates your smoothie. I'm gonna, gosh. Because people are you. busy and they want, like if I could Postmate it from Sun Life, Khalil, no, Khalil that would be really nice and awesome. Really I'm just saying, smoothie. literally, I've heard you talk about the smoothie when you did a podcast with Jorge Cruz. Yeah. I remember taking notes. This is like three years That's ago. so long ago. And that was way back when. So now I've simplified it. So now I have one superfood blend. And instead of the five, 10 ingredients that I used to line up. It's all in this one blend and it's really good. And it's by longevity. It's longevity. I'm going to buy that. So everything I'll is, send it it's, to you. it's all, it's all just You've got one like scoop. 10 mindful, young superfood ingredients in one scoop and I double it up and it's, it's longevity by Brooke, Brooke Body. We did this collab. I went to the lab. It's solid. What's in the scoop? So there's maca, matcha, probiotics, cacao, goji berry, flaxseed, like everything that we love and need. You know who's going to buy that? Him. Me. He's I'm going to send it to you. He's really wellnessy. No, no, I'll, I'll buy it. And it tastes great. It doesn't have that dirty, earthy. And it's got natural protein. And I'm not a big believer in protein powders. I don't think we really need them. Because people go too crazy with them. I think so. I'm a big meat eater like you. Me too. So I that need makes meat. Me What's the workouts that you're doing? I know they're off your app, but when you describe your app to someone, what is it like? Is there weights? Is it your own body? Is it? Pilates? I like a little bit of weights. I'm never afraid of that. I like a little bit of weights for all the booty burning and body sculpting because we need to build muscle to burn fat. I think we know that, but I think a lot of women are afraid of that. So I do a lot of body sculpting. Okay. Meaning using your, think about a ballerina. So women, super small, tiny, but one of the strongest athletes in the world, I think, all core centered. So I do a lot of like tilt in the pelvis, tilt of the feet, a lot of core movement, compound moves, sculpting. So cinching the waistline, lifting the booty. Like if you were to think of the booty in different chain- chambers as a woman, boys too. I can think of you it. You got to lift, sculpt, and tighten. So everything that I do is kind of designed for a female body, but men do it too. Boys love booty burn. It's great. <laughs> you but, love a good we love a good ass on a guy though yeah, too well for sure so well, think also, about I think like men could do more with the core well and you can use your core the whole time you're working out so for me do I have an hour a day not really so what do you have so I, I can I could change someone's body doing 8 minutes of abs and doing 12 minutes of booty because they're compound moves they're thoughtful we're target toning so you're lifting tucking sculpting and building and I think we want curves now I think you know our society has shifted I love a healthy body on a female men too, but we're sculpting and target toning and being really efficient head to toe. And now we're doing a lot of intentional fitness. So we started out body sculpting, then Brook Brook Body became Brook Brook Body and Soul. And now I'm shifting into meditation, guided meditation, intentional wellness, which means how do we meet ourselves? Goes back to guilt. Same conversation. How do we carve out time? What's our inner dialogue? How do we rewire? How do we retrain our brain? How do we change our body? That's the easy part. How did you start meditation? I really struggled with it because I couldn't get my brain to slow down. Um, 
And then I started doing guided meditations, free meditations on YouTube, listening to them at night. Then I started doing a lot more yoga. So I teach yoga now as well. I started teaching sound baths. I'm a, a, a breathwork practitioner. So a lot of the transformation work that I do and the sisterhood sealing, sealing, the sisterhood circle healing, men as well, a lot of TP time that I do. I have a property at home that I built that's really, that's transformational. But I started dabbling with sound frequency, sound bowls. Love it. How do we calm our body down? How do I calm my kids down? How do I change my frequency, vibrations? I have amazing sound frequency playlists that I found on Spotify that like put you in a trance. Four, so, uh, 528 hertz. 528. Four, it's four, amazing, yeah, both of them. But it's really interesting what's available to us for free. I mean, even my app, let's call it free. It's like, I don't know, a quarter a day. Who cares? I'll send it to you if you can't afford that. But it's learning how to reset, recharge, reboot, reimagine, rewire. And meditation for me kind of became, it really was COVID because suddenly everything slowed down and I wasn't rushing out the house in the morning with a microwavable coffee in the car in my pajamas to drive my kids to school. I had a moment to really pause. And in doing that, I learned that stillness is required. We need to slow down. You need it in life, love, business. You need it to deepen that relationship with yourself. And I can do it in 10 minutes and I can change the course of my day. I completely agree with you. Ryan Holiday wrote that book, Stillness is the Key. And and mm. I meditated with my son every single day when he was in my, oh my stomach. Gosh, amazing. But recently, I you kind of sometimes have like... Um, well, for me, I don't know if this happens to everybody, but I have I've have like sort of a slump mm-hmm. where you think, you oh, bored? I'm, no, no, I think, oh, I'm good. And then oh. I won't meditate for two weeks. And then I'm a fucking psycho. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is why I do this. It's almost like it's preventative. I could not agree with you more. I'm so glad you brought that up because we do things that feel good, that change us. There's a shift. And then we think, okay, we're good. And so we stop doing it, right? And then you go back. So recently, this summer, we just launched a 21-day wellness challenge. And the reason it's 21 days is because I think it takes three weeks to develop habits that stick and to really design a lifestyle. But it doesn't mean that now you're cruising and you're good and you don't have to do the work anymore. Like imagine even in a marriage and relationships, you're just going to stop working on it every single day. Like this is a work in progress. And I always say that wellness doesn't come natural. I don't think self-care comes natural. I don't, people think it's just going to be easy and we're just going to do it every day. You got to freaking work on it. You have to like wake up and prioritize and set an intention. And maybe meditation is really hard. Sometimes I do it at night. Sometimes I do it in Savasana. I usually get all my stuff worked out in yoga. Like I'm that person, but that's my therapy. Are you in silence? Are you listening to Joe Dispenza? What are you I'm doing? I'm listening to Joe Dispenza. I love him sometimes. I don't, everything I do is kind of guided. I, I struggle with silence. I like Joe Dispenza guided and I know exactly but what meditation the is. It's a 50-minute one that you I've do I've done them all. His meditation voice is a little... Told you. Strange for me. I I'm love you, Joe Dispenza. I, I, I watch Rewired Everyone on the Gaia Network. I'm obsessed. I haven't watched that. Oh my God, it's amazing. You guys are okay. going to watch that. It just sounds it's like he's coming series. from outer space when he talks to you. I know. I love his content, his body of work, his po- The meditation. Intense. Eyes closed. I, I'm, having a, I'm having a hard time with that. So <laughs> I'm I just, I'm, I'm, uh, Joe, I'm sorry. I love you. I, I'm still listening to you because I love you. But the meditation, I'm, hard, I'm having a hard time. I built this tree house at Soul Joe's Creek. Joe's definitely Wild. a grabby by the arm kind of guy. He is. <laughs> no. Sure. I built this tree house at Soul Creek Wellness, which is my property at home. And it's a, uh, I, I saw a picture in Bali and I really loved it. And so I had my, my team built this like big trap platform in a eucalyptus tree. And so I'll go up there and chill and meditate and listen to the water, the trees, the river, like water energy. I dig. It's in nature. I would love to have you guys come over. I will host you and would love to share that gift with you. But I started um, recording guided meditations myself and then putting them to nature, um, meditation, music, and sometimes just the sound of the wind blowing through the trees. So we we added that. It's it's the latest edition at Brookburg Body. And it's just to have the company and the comfort and to listen to music and to listen to a thoughtful guided meditation. And so we're doing the I am meditations. And I always tell people too, like humbly, if you don't like my voice, you don't like I do like your voice. voice. I was just going to say your voice Thank is you. so relaxing. Thank you. But if you don't like it, like then find one that you like that's soothing and let it just inspire your own inner dialogue. And then pretty soon you'll start your own 
inner dialogue meditation. And I really think it works. It helps you get clear. It helps you with anxiety. It'll help you sleep better. It'll help you find your own stillness so that you can listen. It's a cheeky concept, but it's like, we hear this from Deepak Chopra all the time. You learn to listen to the language of your soul in stillness. If we don't slow down, we can't freaking hear. When you say you have a tree house that's on property, what do you mean? Is this like anyone can walk into your house? What do you mean? No one can walk in. Taylor's and- so- oh, <laughs> Taylor, you can come. Taylor's coming over for chicken. I, I, I've been doing female guided retreats, and transformational retreats all over the globe. And then COVID happened. And then I found myself in at beautiful locations and hotels, but sometimes in corporate spaces where I was like, eh, the ambiance wasn't really there. So it would take like a day or it would take a day and a night to kind of get people out of their big brain and tap into their wellness space. So I decided to build this very woohoo kind of a hippie property on an acre in Malibu that is the space that I want to go to. So I have a labyrinth. I have teepees. I have tents. I do a full. You guys have got to come. I do a full. We're doing a couples retreat, by the way. I bring in other experts at field, a variety of different modalities to drop people into nature. So you nurture in nature. So you have sun, mother nature, earth energy, teepees, super cool. We do breath work. We do meditation. We do sound baths, tai chi, chingao, yoga, plant-based meals, community, journaling. Like it's the work that I love to do. But when you take people out of their space that they know it and you create kind of a newness and then you drop them into nature, it's really, it's emotional, it's deep. It's natural. Um, I just, I, I love this work so much. And then I also do a lot of retreats at Savannah, which is in a place called Carefree, Arizona. I have one coming up in September, a mother-daughter retreat. I have a goddess retreat in November. I have a Costa Rica retreat in January. But the couples retreat also is about communication, discovery, love, um, tantric exploration that's not super kinky, that we consider it in the Western culture. It's just about space and time and pace and love and connection and boundaries and communication and Let's all of go. these things come on the way. You guys, no, I love Michael, it. see the Did men get, the men come. get uncomfortable, huh? No, I'm and not they uncomfortable. Do, but by no, the way, you're not uncomfortable. No. Okay. Get the chicken dinner ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make you full chicken. <laughs> we make all the food on property. Um, but they're, they're just, you know, there are moments. I think we all need an opportunity to deepen our understanding of ourselves. And when life is happening so fast and we're grinding, we're raising a family, we're building a relationship, we're starting businesses, the pace is so violent that we're climbing and we're grinding. And then what? And then what happens when you get there? Like, then what? So I'm really, I guess, obsessed and driven by purpose right now and finding what that is, what that means to you, to me, to people that I work with. What lights your heart? What lights your heart on fire? I tell that to my kids, like, what's your purpose? I don't care what you do. Find your purpose. You're so successful at what you do that that it makes sense that this is the stage that you're in. And I think there's so many there's so many billionaires. I've been seeing this on TikTok that really carve out thinking time and still time. And you would think as a billionaire, you're hustle, hustle, hustle. But that's not it. I agree. It's not it. And then when you get there, then what? What does life look like? Are, right. are you happy in the wee hours of the morning? And when you lay your head down at night, when it's you alone in the dark or whoever right. you're with or not with, what is it really all for? And I don't know. I, I, I purpose is, it's so important. You know, that Mark Twain quote, I use it a lot in breath work. And he says that the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why. That's a good like, one. Like the day you figure that out why and what does that mean? I've never heard that quote. I love that That's quote a good so one. much. The two most important days are the day you were born, the day you figure out why. And I think we're more conscious as a society. Or we wouldn't be having these kind of conversations. We'd be talking about, you know. People are more open than they were, I think, 10, 20 years ago. I think so. Thank God. Thank God. More if open, you- but also more noise. Yes. More noise, more opportunities. More, the yeah. more success breeds more opportunities, more yeah. confusion more fucked up people in your life, more problems, more lawsuits, like more everything. So how do you dim that light uh-huh. a little bit? How you do quiet down the noise a little bit? You have to be... How do you manage it all? And dim the content no, too. True, you, so much I content coming at you. You have to be way more intentional now to take time with with yourself. I think so. Because we're, you know, I, and I just think like Lauren and I, we grew up on the cusp of like, we didn't have smartphones until after we got out of school. And so I just remember having a lot more 
alone, introspective time before all this. Now you're just so, we're so connected. It's hard. Yeah, you have to be, you have to like set the thing down. And we're so and accessible. Go. Like I have rules at home, you know, and I try to do this with friends too when we can that, you know, there's no tech allowed, like dinner table, kitchen, no, because we're all cooking, but it's a moment where can we really look at each other in the eyes and can we taste our food and can we really enjoy it? Can we make that our conference room and can we connect through meals? And it's the same thing with friendship. Um, Scott and I also dating. I mean, we usually get into the car and, you know, if we're in an Uber, we have a driver and we both get on the phone and it's like, okay, when, like we're here, but we're not really here. And by the way, it's really easy to do. So I'm human in it. Even with my kids, they run their life. They're, you know, singer songwriters also. So they're, we're running our life and telling our story and creating and running our businesses on our phone. So I make, I shut it off. I shut it off at night. My do not disturb goes on maybe it's seven at night and doesn't go back on until seven in the morning. And it drives my team crazy, but I feel like I've earned that and yeah. I need it. And also you, and I think for, for you to be uh, proactive and not reactive, like you have yeah. to be able to have space and like bookend your day. So and you I need to be present and, and the work is never done. And no. I have, and I need two more hours in the day. Right. And it's really hard, but I feel like we have to carve out those moments and, that's what I mean by that willingness to protect your boundaries. And especially as a new mom and a wife and a businesswoman, what does that look like? And then how valuable is that? And how better are we because of it? Before you go, will you just tell our audience what your morning routine is? If you have any yeah, things that you do. I do. So I'm making myself lay in bed a little bit longer. I usually pray. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I pray. So like sometimes God wakes me up, I'll pray. I pray a lot. Um, or sometimes it's just a, a moment for meditation. If Scott's with me, we actually try to stay in bed. And sometimes it's just 10 minutes to do some kind of a meditation, whether it's guided or it's our, our morning playlist. I'll share it with you. Then I go down and I broth my milk. I make my coffee and I bring it back up to bed. And I know that's like, oh, wow, really? I never did that for my first husband or my second husband. And I was never willing to do that. So that's kind of our ritual. I know you better start making coffee, girl. She has me make the coffee. I know. And, that, and that's also realistically, not if there's a morning appointment or we're late or we're grinding. OK, but my intention is to actually drink that cup of coffee and connect before he's reading the Wall Street Journal, before I get on my tablet, before I look at my Instagram. Um. I'll get up and then if the kids are home, I sort them out and Shia can't seem to eat enough ever because he's training for football. So I'll make him food or make him his lunch or make him whatever he's taking to practice. I teach classes in the morning, either at my house or at Rafi's if I'm not working. So I'll get ready for that or I'll try to find like an intention, a message. And because I come from live television, I always make it up as I go, which makes people crazy, but that's just how I run my life. So I'll find like a sentiment. Um, I'll dry brush. I love, I'm obsessed with dry brushing right now. I'll dry brush before I get in the shower. So good for your skin. It wakes you up. Those, the, you know, the gift that you're giving me, your um, ice roller. Ice roller. I'm obsessed, you guys. I keep mine in the freezer. So I'll roll out my eyes. I'll roll out my face. I'll do my little like beauty routine. Um, and then I'm kind of on the go. It depends on what my day dictates. I'll feed my little kitten. I'll, I'll play with my dog. Kind of like normal stuff. Normal stuff. I besides the ice have rolling. wanted <laughs> to have you on the podcast Thank for you. like seven years. So it's just so cool to not only have you on, but see how balanced and amazing you Thank live you. your life. I Thank have. You. I forgot one really important thing. Tell us. I want to just keep it real since we were. And I, and I do make love to Scott in the morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes we're too tired at night and it's not seven what minutes of heaven. Sometimes you... it's shorter. I wouldn't, I shouldn't say me. I could say him. So probably TMI, but I can't leave that out just to keep it real. Like, hold on, hold on. Hold I know. On. Is this before <laughs> or after coffee? Um, he wants it before. Sometimes I need my coffee because then I'm thinking about the coffee. What, it just depends. What would Brooke Burke do if there was a toddler <laughs> that was three years old staring and then there's a baby that's going, pop, 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 Then it wouldn't pop, be seven minutes of heaven. No, this is why, Laura, I know, I have but to listen, sneak you, off. You this gotta is a hard... Out, you got to carve out your time and then I'm off the hook if it, if it happens at night. So I know, but we're also in a new relationship. Listen, so Lauren, he's... Talk to me in another year. Our son's No, young don't change that. <laughs> Sorry to say that, everyone, I but I think... felt like I was being dishonest with my God, morning listen, routine. I love need, your morning. We need the juice over here. We need the information. Literally. <laughs> Brooke Burke, can we give away can we give away like a membership yes. to your app? Oh, I would love okay. that. All you guys have to do is follow at Brooke Burke on that the Brooke. Yes, what? so at Brooke Burke, and then there's also at Brooke Burke Body 
Um, and I'm really, everything is easy to find even on brookbrook.com. So if you want to see where you can meet me, live events, retreats, come to a class, come to a breath work, like find some feel good. I'd love to connect and hear from your audience. And I'm happy to give away several memberships. I mean, honestly, this is an act of service for me as much as it is a business. I'm really passionate, obviously, about this space. So give me a handful of people that need a change and we will sort them out. You tell me how many. What do you want to do? Let's give away a dozen. I oh, don't that's mind. amazing. She's giving away a dozen memberships to her yeah, app. All, yeah. you do, all you have to do to win is follow her on both accounts. Tell us your favorite takeaway of this episode. I know there was a lot. Um, I mean, you can get as cheeky as you want on my latest post at Lauren Bostic. And then where can everyone find you said I know that you have your app, but is there anywhere else that they can find you shop, do anything? I think your longevity powder. All I know. Things. I mean, everything's on brookbrook.com. That's okay. probably the hub. And I feel like even you guys in my deep research, of there are so many Instagrams that are feeding all of these opportunities that it's just important to stay connected. And I love those conversations with people. You're I welcome do. back I anytime, but I, I hope that you get a podcast. <laughs> this was fun, Brooke. Let's do a podcast. Anytime yes. you want to come on. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you, you, Brooke. Thank you.